Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he perfected this deen. الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِ وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا Allah Ta'ala mentions, today I perfected your deen. Today I have completed my blessing upon you. Today I have been happy that for you I have accepted Islam. My dear brothers, Allahu Akbar, when we have all these beautiful things, one must question what got us into the situation, what brought us down to this stage, and what can we do to get out of this plight which we currently see. You'll have loads of different people bring different theories based on what is in the yaqeen of the heart. Someone who's a bit business oriented will say, no, money needs to be in the hands of the Muslims. Someone who has a bit of an educational inclination will say, no, the only solution for Muslims is in education. Someone with a bit of a military inclination, they will say, no, it needs to be in the strength of the numbers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refutes money in the Quran. Allah gives example of people in the past who on their strength were naqam. They were destroyed, they were disgraced, they were dishonored. Allah gives multiple examples. He uses the life of the Prophet ﷺ to educate us. Only that will be deen, only that will be success, only that will be beneficial in deen, in dunya, in this dunya, in qabr, in akhirat, on the day of judgment, which will help us all the way across the Buddha Salat and in Jannah, that which will shown by Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Nothing else will constitute deen Nothing else will have the basis of benefit Nothing else will bring the ummah back to glory by the qasam of Allah When Allah said I have perfected for you this deen The solution to our halat and condition is in the very same deen In that thing which we are turning away from You brothers are the future for this country my honorable sisters are the future for this country. What, show, what face are we showing to the public people? With this takrim, with this i'zaz, with this position, with this, with this status, comes taklif and comes responsibility as well. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa your prophet was that prophet that said, I am the last prophet to come, yet I will be the first to enter paradise. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Jannat has become haram and forbidden on all of the previous prophets until I, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, don't enter Jannah, the likes of Adam alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Dawood alayhi salam, Zakaria, Isa, Sulaiman alayhi salam. Until I do not enter Jannah, Jannat is haram on all of the Anbiya alayhi salam. And once these muqaddas, these great hastiya and these great individuals enter Jannah, then they will be selected from the people of Ummah, different nations. Perhaps they were stronger than us. Perhaps they had more faculty of intellect than us. Maybe they were better designed than us. Perhaps they were better in certain ways. But by the qasam of Allah, because the Prophet was your Prophet, you will be the fortunate individual that would go into Jannah first. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned this as well. Jannah is haram on every ummah until my ummah does not enter Jannah first no ummah can enter Jannah that is who you are my brother that is what you are put aside the fact of Bangladesh or Pakistan or India or Somalia Gujarati, Punjabi, Sindhi, Balochi, Pathan all these things Wallahi Qasam it's got nothing no relevance in the court of Allah Allah Ta'ala has made us an Ummah, Allahu Akbar, Muslim Ummah. These were things just to come for lita'arafu. Allah Ta'ala made us so we can recognize one another. This was not the guiding basis for any individual. We need to think, number one, holistically like this, as wider Muslims. And secondly, make the deen our focus and also the dunya our focus as well. Inshallah, which we will come towards just now. 
but with that with that tashrif, with that position Allah Ta'ala has given you, comes the khalif as well. I'll, I'll give you an example by worldly example. Perhaps we can all relate to this in that way. If you are a normal job, you work in a normal job, you work in a factory, you go to your 9 till 5 job, you're clocking in and clocking out. Do you, if you have a day off, will that make much of an impact on the company? They can get someone to fill the staff. Perhaps if you're working in retail and you take a day off, what's your manager going to do? He's going to phone someone and say, we've got a job available. He'll phone up the latest new the agency and say, send someone. We need to fill a position for today. And then you will go, you will do your shift and then there's no recollection, there's no ta'alluq, there's, no, there's nothing after that. You take your pay, you're gone, khalas, go to the next job. That person doesn't hold much position. A company has 100 employees, 300 employees, however many they are, they don't hold that much of a position. Yes, they're part of the wider circle, but they're not an influence in that circle. And then you have the manager, and you have the supervisors, and the status gets more and more higher up the ladder. What happens if the manager doesn't turn up? The whole show goes, to, goes pear-shaped. If a normal person took a day off, no problem, no issue. Replace him with somebody else. What if the manager doesn't turn up? What if the director doesn't turn up? What if the guy who's main responsible, the head CEO of the company, he flops? What's going to happen to the company then? My dear respected brothers, each and every one of you sitting here, Allah ki qasam is the CEO for mankind. Ask each other, remind each other again and again, you know who we are. You know, you've got to remind yourself who in exactly your brother. You're not, on, you're not just an average person on the street. Do you know who you are? Allah's qasam put every single person without iman in the world and let you alone be on one jazeera, one island by himself. And by the qasam of Allah, Allah will keep the world intact because of you. Because you are saying la ilaha illallah. If, you, if there is even one person with Iman on this world, Allah will keep the world intact. Once everyone finishes, bas, khalas, now bring Qiyam. No need for the dunya anymore. Because of you, the world is intact, brother. Because of you, the dunya is intact. And what have we become now? Well, the same youngster for which the world, the same Muslim for which the world is intact. Now we've become those people who have become the drug dealers. We've become the people who are doing the haram, the zina. Go to Oldham. Go, what are you seeing here? Bro, I'm not that jahil as well. We got called to one of the local Glodwick masjids. Allah save us all. And we know when we can see, is it called paraphernalia? What's that word? I should know the word. What's the word? Anyone know the word? Astaghfirullah, I don't want to be too blatant, but I can tell that a few boys had been gathering in a few areas and I was like looking at the floor saying, but I know that there's been something not going on here. We went to Bradford, subhanAllah. I don't want to mention the area because then people can be a bit uptight. And Allahu Akbar, just, just near the masjid, I see a couple of boys and you know they're smoking drugs near the masjid. And you would think that there should be an element of gharat within us. Okay, the house of Allah is just there. But that doesn't kick in. I'm not using that. I'm just because it's a per it happens probably everywhere. But because this was a personal experience, I can say this isn't something which I've just heard or read online. I witnessed it myself. And I got invited to Leeds, same situation. Masjid here, on the main road, couple of boys, boots up, blazing tunes, passing around some menfalls or whatever you want to call them, if that's what you want to say. And no concern, Masjid is there, Allahu Akbar. Okay, put the Masjid to the side. Brother, the fact that you are from the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you were to guide mankind. What have you reduced yourself to? What have you become? Who are you becoming? We have to re reaffirm, re retell ourselves again and again who we exactly are.